Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 11 from the October 2020 International A-Level C12 paper. This is a question about um, the factor and remainder theorems. And um, here it says that if they're giving you function f of x. It says given that x plus 3 is a factor of f of x, show that a possible value of k is 5 and find the other possible value of k. k is a constant. So here, if x plus 3 is a factor of f of x, if x plus 3 is a factor of f of x, then what we know is whatever makes this bracket 0, which is when x equals negative 3, that means if you substitute minus 3 into the function f, you're going to get 0. Whatever makes this bracket 0 will make this whole function 0 when you substitute it into that function. Okay, that's going to be true. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute minus 3 inside this function and see what we get. So we have 13 plus 3 times negative 3. You've got to be very careful here with signs and stuff in this kind of question. We've got negative 3 plus 2 times negative 3 plus k squared. So this, goes, this is going to give you 13, take away 9, and you're going to have plus, you're going to have minus 1 times minus 3 plus k squared. Okay, so what's that that's going to give us? You have 13 minus 9, which is 4, uh, minus, and you got basically k minus 3 squared. All right, so... Basically, we know that this is equal to zero. So a quick way of, of solving this problem, instead of expanding this, we know that f minus 3 equals zero. So let's equate this to zero. So 4 minus k minus 3 squared is equal to zero. Instead of expanding this all and then solving it, there's actually a quick way as we have this square bracket, we could make, we could just basically um, add k minus 3 to both sides. So you have 4 equals k minus 3 squared. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget there's a positive negative of, um, you know, possibility. So you say k minus 3 <laughs> is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. So k take away 3 is either plus or minus 2. So k is going to be 3 plus or minus 2. So you can say k is equal to 5 or k is equal to 1. Those are the two possible values of k. And it says part one show that possible value of k is five. So that's part one. And that's part two done in one, one step. Okay, so those that's showing k is five and that's the other possible value of k. All right, we could have also done this alternatively if some people might have just expanded this. Okay, and I'll show you how that would work. Although I think it's more work to do that way. You, you, you have four minus k minus three squared equals zero. So somebody might have, let's say, expand this bracket so you have 4 minus, this would be k squared, minus 6k plus 9 equals 0. So you end up with a minus k squared plus 6k. And you have 4 minus 9, which is minus 5 equals 0, which you can then multiply both sides of minus 1. k squared minus 6k plus 5 equals 0. So you end up with k minus 5 times k minus 1 equals 0, so k equals 5 and k equals 1. Those are the two values of k. But I think this is much easier. This is like an alternative way of doing it by continuing. If you spot the square bracket, okay, that makes life a bit easier. But don't forget the positive and negative options when you find the square root. Okay, so that's part 1 done. And we're going to go on to part b. That's part a done, now part b. So it says, given that k equals 5, write f of x as a product of two algebraic factors. Okay, so now we know that k is equal to 5. I'm going to say that means f of x is equal to, um, well, what we've got here, we can use, um, we can use this instead of, you know, we can use this thing. Now, actually, um, we can't actually because that's what f equals 3 here. So let's just do it this way. Okay, so given that k equals 5, write f of x as a product of two algebraic factors. Okay, so we got 13 plus 3x plus x plus 2 times x plus 5 squared. So now let's 
expand this and simplify up so that we got a, a, quad, a cubic expression then we can try to factorize it okay we know that x minus 3 x plus 3 is a factor we told that already in the question that x plus 3 is a factor when k equals 5 so x plus 3 is a factor we know that okay when k equals 5 x plus 3 is a factor okay and we also know um yeah okay so when k, k equals 5 x plus 3 is a factor so now we're going to have 13 plus 3x plus this is x plus 2 times x squared plus 10x plus 25 when you expand this bracket don't just write x squared plus 25 no it's x plus 5 times itself so you're going to have x squared plus 5x plus another 5x plus 25 or you can use the pattern square the first term multiply these two then double it for the middle term and then square the last term so here we got 13 plus 3x plus and now we're going to expand this bracket so x cubed plus 10x squared plus 25x that's multiplying each of these terms by x now by 2 so 2x squared plus 20x plus 2 times 25 50 so this is going to give you x cubed now you got x squared terms of 10x squared plus 2x squared that's plus 12x squared and the x terms are 3x plus 25x plus 20x that's going to be 45 48x and the number terms are 13 and 50 so that's plus 63 so this is what f of x is equal to when k equals 5 and we know when k equals 5 x plus 3 is a factor so if I do use long division, okay, that should give me um, the other factor or factors. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use long division. Now I've got x cubed, x squared, x, nothing's missing, so I can just write them straight down. x cubed plus 12x squared plus 48x plus 63. x into x squared, x cubed goes x squared times multiply this by x squared you get x cubed minus 3x squared then you subtract these two lines these disappear which they should do if they didn't they've done something wrong 12x squared minus minus 3x squared is going to give me um yeah sorry x plus 3 is a factor so that should be x plus 3 my bad sorry about that that's a mistake there i just i just realized it says x plus 3 is a factor and row x minus 3. x plus 3 is a factor. So x into x cubed goes to x squared time. You have x cubed plus 3x squared. Now we subtract these two. That gives me 0 and that gives me 9x squared. Bring down the next term, which is 48x. x into 9x squared goes 9x times. 9x times x is 9x squared. 9x times 3 is 27. So you have plus 27x. Then we've got to subtract these. When you subtract these, you end up with that becoming 0, and that's 48 minus 27, which is 21x. Bring the next term down, which is a plus 63. Okay, 21. x into 21x goes 21 times. 21 times x is 21x. 21, 21 times 3 is plus 63. As we can see, there should be no remainder, which there is. That means we're on the right tracks. So I can say f of x is x plus 3 times x squared plus 9x plus 21. So that's part uh, 1. Okay, so that's part 1 done. Then it says, show that the equation f of x equals 0 has only one real solution. Okay, so, so part 2, we got to show that f of x equals 0 has one solution. So f of x equals 0, that means x plus 3 times x squared plus 9x plus 21 equals 0. So we can say either x plus 3 equals 0, in which case x equals negative 3. That's one solution. Or we can say x squared plus 9x plus 21 equals 0. Now we've got to show that this part will give you no solution, which means that that's the only solution to this cubic equation. So how can I show that this has no solution? Let's find the discriminant. Okay, so let's use the discriminant. So we can say the discriminant... We can say it's b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so you're going to have b is 9, so it's 9 squared 
minus 4 times 1, that's A is 1, and C is 21. So we end up with, that's um, 81 minus, and 4 times 21 is 84, which is negative 4. So we can say B squared minus 4AC is less than 0. Therefore, there's no solutions to this part. So this has no solutions. Therefore, only one solution, which is x equals negative 3. So you have to mention that as the discriminant is less than 0, there's no solution. That should be mentioned in your steps. There's no solution to this part of the equation. This is a quadratic part. This, you know, once you've found this, this, this solution, you're left with this quadratic part, which has no solutions. That means x equals minus 3 is the only solution for that equation, meaning this curve will only cross the x-axis at this point. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 11, part B, 1 and 2. Okay, so we've got algebraic long division here and um, a bit of using the discriminant and also, you know, using the factor theorem in the first part of the question. Okay, now, uh, somebody was asking about the P1 exam. Um, how can you show that there is, you know, find the number of roots in a cubic? I think something similar to this must have been his question okay so like in a cubic function you can use the discriminant once you have um got split it up into the two factors one of them being a linear factor the other one being a quadratic you can show that the quadratic part has no solutions by using the discriminant but you can't use the discriminant in the beginning uh, you know when it's a cubic like this you have to factorize it and then you show that oh, that that's one solution and then you can show the other part doesn't have the solution using the discriminant. Discriminant is only used for a quadratic equation. So once you have separated this solution from those solutions, you know that this part is a quadratic, so you can use the discriminant on that section. Okay, so that maybe hopefully answers a question that one of the students was asking. All right, so that's the answer to this question, which was from October 2020. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this region here. Other questions from this topic of factor theorem, and uh, algebraic long division can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.